Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. It's that time again, time for Condo Insider, a Hawaii show about living in an association. About 38% of our population lives in an association, and lots of owners and board members like to know more about doing a better job, and that's what our show is all about. I do want to take a moment and do a shout out to our police department, first responders, and fire department. I've had the privilege the last, uh, I want to say, nine, 10 weeks of going to the Honolulu Citizens Police Academy, where you go through 13 classes and learn the challenges, in this case, of being a police officer. I'm sure the uh, firefighters and first responders have similar challenges. But I can tell you from my experience, our public safety we deserve, or our police department deserves a lot of credit for their professionalism, what they do. It's a tough job. And it's a lot harder than one might think. And uh, I would encourage you to go on the Honolulu Police Department's website and look for the application to go to the Honolulu Citizens Police Academy, 13 weeks long. Major responsibility, lots of time, but you get to do a lot of cool and exciting things. So uh, uh, again, I wanna thank our police department and all the first responders and fire department for keeping our community safe. That being said, I'm also annoyed today. I'm annoyed because I can't stand it anymore. And I'm getting people continuing to call me, talking about board meetings, not being able to speak, open board meetings, secret meetings, and everything else. So I'm gonna try one more time to try to help everybody understand what the law is and what the intentions are. And I brought in my leading expert, Nalan, our attorney expert, to talk to me about this. Welcome back to the show. Aloha, everyone. Thank you for having me again. Are you so, tired of seeing me yet being on the show? You do such a good job, <laughs> you know? No, no, always a pleasure to be back. Yeah. Well, how much do I have to pay you to say that? I mean, <laughs> either way. And just tell everybody again briefly what you do besides being a mean attorney that beats up on everybody. Oh, uh, I'm of uh, counsel with the law firm Damon Keeley on Kupchak Hastert. We are a full service law firm with deep roots on this island uh, serving all Hawaiian you know, residents. Uh, myself, I practice immigration law and condominium association law. Uh, I, you know, actually, actually, I graduated from UH Law School and my my first job, you know, out of law school is representing associations. Since then, I've been, you know, like um, trying to be the voice for our industry, uh, representing associations on all matters, uh, sort of serving as their general counsel, providing legal opinions, interpreting project documents, handling collections, foreclosures, you know, litigation, dispute resolution. Yeah. Well, you know, I think it was last week. I may I lose track of time. We've done over 115 shows, believe it or not. We had, I remember your firm, Tread Irely here, mm -hmm. who talked about something I hadn't thought much about, is uh, when the insurance company turns down your claim, kind of insurance coverage issues. And he was quite fascinating and interesting, you know, but you have a really great firm, broad-based, and uh, I appreciate you coming here and, uh, and trying to help me through this. All right, let's get into it. Yeah. You t I told you I'm frustrated. <laughs> Are boards required to have open board meetings and why? Yes, uh, all condominium associations are subject to uh, 514B, the statutory requirements, uh, if you have five or more units. Uh, and one of the requirements is uh, you, you are supposed to have, uh, you know, open board meetings and, you know, at least once a year. Well, you know, the problem I see, mm -hmm. I hate to say that, you know, this 514B also, and most governing documents say, you're governed by Robert's Rules of Order, or, or that's a part of your mm -hmm. meeting conduct, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. And Robert's Rules of Order has a whole bunch of other stuff in there about uh, the president's right to appoint committees. And there's a term called the committee of the whole, mm -hmm. where a board as a whole, meaning everybody, mm -hmm. can go meet as kind of a work session to kind of talk about mm -hmm. things. And I understand why that might be useful at times. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I get the sense that sometimes boards are, are using that and saying it's a committee of the whole, voting in the committee of the whole, and then just ratifying it at the next board meeting so there is no 
real discussion in public, and there is no real vote in public other than, mm -hmm. quote, the ratification of a prior vote. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? You cannot use the committee of a whole or these informal work sessions to try to re replace a functional board meeting. Uh, you know, from the big picture, you know, there are different authorities governing associations. First, you know, that's the statute. And then you have your governing documents, declarations, bylaws, house rules. And then, you know, there's Robert's uh, rules of order. When you know there's something that's not provided in your stat in the statute, you cannot find anything you know in your project documents. Then you can try to look into Robert's you know rules for guidance. But if you know there is requirements, there is provisions in your project doc, or there's statutory provisions, and they're conflicting with each other. You should always you know the statute goes first. You follow that, and then you know you go back to your project documents. Uh, you know. The whole purpose of having board meetings is basically to have all members of the association, you know, have the right and access to learn, you know, how the pro project is wrong operated, because you know this is everybody's project. Even you know, being board directors, you're just elected representatives to make it functional, but you have the obligation to report back to your members and the board meeting via meeting minutes that provided the vehicle for everybody to be informed and also if you want to be more involved you have the right to do so as well. So beside the statute let's just say is there a practical reason why you should have open board meetings as a board? Oh yeah definitely uh, you know practically speaking I think you know uh, the board meeting provides a, a good uh, process for directors, you know, before you vote, you discuss the rationale behind your vote, and then of course your former decision, your voting results, and everybody's vote uh, will be recorded in the minutes. Uh, you know, for future, if there's something getting into disputes, you can always go back, and you know, of course, you know, you, you, with DNO, you, you're familiar with uh, board directors sometimes got sued. You know, there's also statutory provisions to talk about, okay, so if a matter is supposed to go to mediation, you know, the board decided not to go to it. And, you know, directors could be subject to personal liability, but they're carved out a special exception there if somebody, if some director voted differently. And then, you know, that uh, that's a safeguard for that, safe harbor for that director. So basically the minutes is, uh, are legal records of what happened, what occurred, you know, uh, it's really the legal records of what, how the association's decision was made. And I hate to put it in these terms, but I'll, 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 I'll say it another way. Yes. When you look at a board meeting, you represent the owners who have elected you. Yes. And those owners have standing because they bought in a condo, they agreed to all the governing documents, they paid a whole bunch of money, mm -hmm. and they have now become severally and permanently liable forevermore to pay maintenance fees. And they probably should have a, a, a say, and at least the ability to see how the board conducts association business, mm -hmm. so it may influence how they might vote for someone in the future. Mm -hmm. It allows them to understand more fully maybe the rationale of the board and why they're making that decision and what the problems the association face. Because in some way, they're indentured servants. They, they don't have a choice. Once they've bought there, they got to pay. And so since they got to pay, they should have a right to know what's going on. That's kind of how I look at it. Of course, and you know, it's not like this board can serve forever. You also sort of use the board meeting to get more interested owners involved so that you can find candidates for your new board directors. Because without, you know, continuing people willing to serve on the board, the association cannot function. So basically, it's also a good communication process. Uh, you know, under the statute, owners have a right to uh, you know, attend board meetings, except of executive session. So yeah, so be more transparent, and that's the whole purpose of having meetings. That's interesting. I'm uh, going to be a speaker uh, at a convention in San Francisco in uh, on September 6, and uh, I was asked to talk about our association industry. And my mm -hmm. title of my speech is. A look into the future and around the corner, mm -hmm. and I I kind of track and I hate to use the word study, but I'm I'm engaged in learning as much as I can about what's going on across the United States on managing associations and other states, whatever it may be, and the popular term today, looking to the future, is called Q 
community engagement. Mm -hmm. you know, our whole way of community, communicating with the community is going to change, particularly with Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all these things I don't know how to use. That our whole method, but the whole concept behind it is to build a community through engagement and participation. Mm -hmm. And I can't think of a better way than having open, transparent board meetings that people can be engaged through that process to be a part of the board to the extent mm -hmm. they're sharing input about the community to help the board make intelligent decisions. So that's kind of how I feel about it. Yeah. But let's kind of get back to the basics of 514B. You know, 514A, for those who don't know, sunsets or dies or is repealed as of January 1, 2019, which is a whole nother story. But pretty much unless you're a developer with unsold units or inherited a unit or whatever it may be, for the vast majority of 90% plus, 514A is gone as of of uh, January 1, 2019. That being said, the 514B part on condominium governance overrode 514A anyway, so they kind of stuck with it anyway. So mm -hmm. let's just go kind of review the open board meeting concept. Who can go to an open board meeting? Board directors, members of the association, or invited guests, uh, you know, uh, guests invited by the board. So a tenant doesn't have a right to go to the board meeting. Unless, you know, they have an invitation. That's right. So if they're invited, anybody can go. Yes. But if they're not invited and they're not an owner or a member of the board, but to be a member of the board, you have to be an owner. Um, how about the association's lawyer or parliamentarian? Are they, I guess they'd be invited guests. They have, mm -hmm. they have no statutory right to go. They have no statutory right, oh, unless they own a unit there. So. Right. And so... In theory, if you went to a board meeting and the board president bought the lawyer or the parliamentarian with him and the board member said, I object to that, and they held a vote, mm -hmm. the majority of the board could say they don't want the attorney or the parliamentarian as a guest. Hmm. But that sounds, you know, usually for, I, I've seen like a pretty common for um, attorneys to go to these board meetings, but for a parliamentary to go to board meetings, that must be means there's something really contentious there going on. Uh, you know, like for executive session, of course, you know, that if their sole purpose is going to that, you know, maybe, you know, there's a way for them to only attending that session instead of, you know, sitting through the whole session if there is, you know, objection there. But if, if the board already made the invitation, I don't think the owners have a right to ex exclude them. And the owners wouldn't, but I'll, yeah. because we're going to go to a short break, but I'm going to make this one final comment before we move on to other okay. subjects. My final comment is I've gone to contentious board meetings <laughs> where the board president surprised the board by bringing an attorney or a parliamentarian. Wow. And where the board members voted to not allow that person to be a guest. Okay, and, then. And they had to go. So my point in summary is, if you're an owner, and that includes a board member because you're a member or, or an owner, you are entitled to go to any board meeting. Anybody else has got to be invited and, and be a guest. And certainly proxies are not allowed at board meetings. You have to be there in person. So an owner does not have the ability to give a proxy to someone mm -hmm. to attend a board meeting. And on that note, we'll come back with further discussion after our one minute break, and maybe I'll settle down from being angry from all these questions. We're back. 
and I'm still angry. Maybe frustrated is the right word, because I don't know how many times we've had to have shows about open board meetings and the right of owners to participate. And I think it's true now that we, the law was changed recently where when they publish the board meeting notice, they have to put the expected agenda mm -hmm. and also they have to adopt meeting rules to allow owner participation, is that right? Yes, basically the new law expanded uh, the owner's rights to participate in board meetings, also specify that the meeting minutes has to include all the agenda items that are expected to be discussed at the meeting. Uh, you know, the board should also adopt owner uh, participation rules so that you can still have an orderly meeting while you have more, more uh, members attending such meetings. So on this notice that says this is the expected agenda for tonight, does that prevent the board from having, uh, amending the agenda and, and doing something additionally? Uh, for regular meetings, you know, things do change, you know, to be realistic, of course, you can't just strictly follow the agenda if there's something, you know, unexpected that needs to be included in the discussion at the meeting. It's okay to go ahead and do that. But, uh, you know, there's another type of board meeting called special board meeting. It's called for the specified purpose. You need to strictly follow the agenda for those meetings. You cannot, you know, um, deviated from that, add on some other items. So a special meeting is limited to the purpose of what you said you're gonna do at the meeting. A regular meeting, even though you have the expected agenda on the notice, the board could amend the agenda and add something that they learned since the posting, because the posting is supposed to be 72 hours uh, in advance of the meeting uh, when practicable, I think the statute mm -hmm. says. So uh, I think the board could call an emergency meeting so long as they notified simultaneously all the owners as they notified all the board members. So the 72 hours is more the routine because you don't have those surprises too often. You know. So let's talk about meeting rules or participation for a second. Mm -hmm. What I've always advised boards is as follows. Certainly you don't want this to be a debate and a shouting match and where it keeps you from doing your business, the owner participation. But what most boards do will say something as follows. The next item on the agenda is discussing the paint color of the new building. Mm -hmm. Before we allow owner participation, the board's gonna discuss it first and maybe hear from a paint designer. Mm -hmm. Then we'll let the owners participate and ask questions or make comments. Yeah. So, okay, paint professional says the following, Frank says this, Susan says that, I say this. Okay, uh, now I would like to have the owner's participation. Okay, thank you for your vote. You like a pink building. I, I see your point, you don't want to paint the building at all. Uh, now that we've heard from everybody, we're gonna take a vote, mm -hmm. boom. Mm -hmm. And that owner who wants to fight with you, you can say, look, I'm limiting you to three minutes to, to talk on that subject, but we're not here to have a debate. We're here to receive your input, mm -hmm. but not get into an argument with you. And frankly, I hate to say from experience, more times than not, even though that participation rule may not be closely followed and people have an intelligent conversation and the owners participate, when in fact you have a difficult situation, by having owner participation rules and treating everybody equally under those rules, mm -hmm. uh, you make the meeting just run more smoothly and you comply with the statute. Yeah, and also make sure you remember to uh, notify every owner in writing when you adopt any new board, uh, owner, sh owner participation rule, because that's important. Uh, you know, if every time if you amend it, you're supposed to give notice to owners again about what is the current rule is. How about the famous, you don't have a board meeting, and I'm gonna call it the email vote. <sighs> what do you think of email votes? That should be avoided, but sometimes, you know, it's sort of, you know, in order to, you know, to timely, you know, respond to emergency matters or important matters with very short time fuse, uh, you, you sort of have to do it and then, you know, try to ratify at a later meeting. But uh, that could be dangerous, as you mentioned before, you know, if, you know, a board member voted a certain way in email, but later on changed his mind, then you know the prior email vote is not gonna be valid, and what are you gonna do with that? 
especially if already you already signed a contract based on that. So that's definitely not a good practice. We wouldn't recommend board trying to conduct business in that way. But if it's necessary, then you know it can be used as a way to conduct yeah, business. You have to be cautious in how you use it because, like I like you just said. Uh, that email vote isn't binding until they go to the board meeting and formally vote in a regular board meeting. Mm -hmm. And a person can change their mind, then you're up, a, up the creek without a paddle if, in fact, people change their mind between the time of the email vote. And then you get into the argument that because I wasn't available and I didn't vote by email, I would have affected the results of the vote to the extent that if they had heard my opinion, they would have voted differently, and now they're with the regular meeting, and now they hear my opinion, they're voting differently, mm -hmm. and now you've signed a contract, you have a big problem. Mm -hmm. That being said, I've seen situations, on being on the board of a condo, uh, I'll kind of generalize this, where the board voted to approve a contract for $5,000, mm -hmm. plus tax. Mm -hmm. And after the vote was approved and the work was being scheduled, the contractor came back and pointed out a hidden condition that wasn't included in the bid of $200. And so the real contract was going to be $5,200 because of a hidden decision. And they want to get this work done next week. That the board could either A, call a special meeting for the purpose of changing the amount, or in this case, the board says, when it was discussed by email, let's just have a new motion at the next meeting and prove it for $5,200, mm -hmm. not take the time because in a way, it was de minimis. It wasn't a big deal. They needed to work, needed to be done. They had an open meeting. They approved 5000 plus tax. And yes, there was a hidden condition when they opened up the wall that wasn't anticipated that maybe they could have covered in the contract itself by saying hidden conditions are an additional fee. And Frank, the contract did say that. Mm -hmm. But um, so it's a little bit of a gray area, but I can understand there could be some rare occasions yeah. where you may discuss something by email on some action you've taken, uh, knowing you're going to amend it, uh, a previous motion at a future meeting. So I'm not going to say it's never done, but I would be very cautionary about it because A, you're denying a person's right to be heard by and having the debate at a meeting, mm -hmm. including the owners. Mm -hmm. And B, if you make a decision and it turns out that the tide has changed and they're not against it, you indirectly, as, a, as the board president who maybe has instigated this, put the association in harm, meaning you're personally in harm, mm -hmm. for violating uh, the, the, the law and the documents. Yeah. So. so hopefully, I mean, you know, like I understand for like holding a special meeting, the major concern may be trying to schedule it, it may be difficult, but these days there's technology, you know, it's okay to call into a meeting. You can also use new technologies like Zoom. You know, you got a video conferencing, everybody can see and hear each other at the same time. So that makes um, finding scheduling meeting be more accessible, easier for everybody to suit everybody's schedule instead of you have to physically be at the same place at the same time. Well, because we're running out of time, I want to discuss one more thing. Sure. Are minutes important? Oh, yeah, for sure. Why? Because uh, it is the legal records of what occurred at the meeting. Uh, it's supposedly to recording, you know, all the uh, official voting results on the official motions. Um, you know, basically that's the vehicle that you use to uh, inform your members in writing, all members in writing of what was conducted at the meeting. And. If you have five board members and three vote yes and two vote no, mm -hmm. do you identify who voted yes and no in the minutes? Yes. And why is that important? Uh, you know, like in the worst scenario, if this matter gets into dispute, it goes to a court, you have a clear record of who did what, and then, you know, as goes back to my example of a mediation example, you know, you could get a, a safe harbor, you know, because you wouldn't know on that mediation matter you are covered. Like, so. Yeah, a friend of mine told me today about a Hawaii Civil Rights Commission complaint on, a, on an emotional support animal. And essentially, the board had approved the emotional support animal. Mm -hmm. But one board member during this process had written a handwritten note to the tenant and saying, I don't like the fact you have a dog or something to that effect. Um, and so the uh, tenant filed a Civil Rights Commission complaint. Mm. And what it got down to is, he said, she said, 
And because they didn't put in the board minutes that the board approved the emotional support animal, they ended up settling the case for some damages because they didn't have a clear record of their decisions, yes and no. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's another reason why minutes are important. Right. But I want you to know I feel better now. <laughs> I was all angry and frustrated coming in, looking at you and having you make me feel that I'm safe and, every, and we're all under control. And, and I'm going to thank you for being here and tell everybody here the great news. The great news, our show is about cannabis. It used to be called marijuana in my days, but now the word is cannabis. And so I'm bringing in one of the leading experts on cannabis and marijuana in condos who wrote an incredible article you all should read. And her name is Nalan. So you get to come back next week and <laughs> Thank talk you. about a different subject. Maybe we should have a discussion about whether the board, when they vote, if they're under the influences of cannabis, whether that's a, a correct vote or not. Well, let's not get on that. Anyway, thank you all for watching Condo Insider, our show about association living. I hope you enjoyed this show. As an industry, we appreciate bringing these topics before you, so hopefully you'll learn something, and we'll see you next Thursday at 3 o'clock with Nalan to talk about cannabis. Aloha. <laughs>